Hello again. I'm looking at more old Instagram pictures. I'm not sure how many of these we've done, but so this is in uh, Manhattan, Kansas, Tuttle Creek at the uh, River Pond Campgrounds. Of course, my daughter there in the foreground, my mother back behind her, and my old Mitsubishi Montero on the back left, and my new bike. My daughter there wearing a really cool um, Muppet Show t-shirt. I tried to raise her when I had her on uh, Fraggle Rock and Muppet Show and DuckTales and all that kind of stuff. Stuff that I knew that was, you know, classic and good. Same place. Same, this is the same night or weekend that we stayed out there. That's her bike that she got for her maybe third or fourth birthday. I forget. This is 2012, but I remember her riding her bike, even with training wheels for the first time, I think, in 2011. That smile, look at that face. Looking like her mom there in that picture. Looking like her mom there in that picture. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. She loves this this old Montero that we used to have. Like, she talks about it still. I, I killed it and got rid of it a couple of years ago, but she still misses it. She loves sitting in the back there, making me drive her around. That face. There's a pair of Converse, obviously hanging from the rearview mirror of the old Montero. I bought these when she was, you know, a baby. They're like 20 bucks. They're like, babies are us. And maybe I put her... Put her in them maybe twice, you know. And of course, she was so young she couldn't even walk, so it was kind of pointless. But ever since then, they've hung in the rear view mirror of all the vehicles I've driven. I think I, I think I put them up there in 2009, so this is 2012, and in 2023 they they still hang from my rear view mirror. I uh, think this is Chipotle in Lawrence, Kansas. You must have. This is us driving home from Manhattan that weekend. So we stopped off in Lawrence. Me on the left, of course. He got home and gave her a little bath. That's her cool hair in the bathtub. And of course, we ended the night like we did many nights in this time period, watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. Eating ice cream. I think that's cookie dough ice cream, too, if I remember. I'm watching an episode, I think that's uh, The Final Sacrifice. Uh, Movie actually called Quest for the Lost City, which I have on VHS. That's Rouse Dower, probably the greatest character ever made. And then, of course, uh, Rift Tracks Live. This is, this is actually at my theater at Regal. This is like a promotional sign that we, you know, we could change the letters and stuff on. And so I had to say this. Torgo approved. And this was actually, uh, I shared this on Instagram or Twitter or something, or, or both probably. And then Rev Tracks actually reached out and asked if they could uh, retweet it or, or whatever or take the image and post it. And I said they should. They could. The Black Dog, Winnie the Pooh book, Mickey Mouse shirt, which is weird because, you know, I think it's so weird. Like, I tell people this all the time, but one thing they don't really tell you about being a parent is that you lose your best friend every couple of years. And what I mean by that is, like, I look at my daughter in this picture and, like, I remember that version of her. And who she was, her personality, her little you know ticks and traits and idiosyncrasies and whatnot, or the way she spoke and her attitude, and and I remember that version of her, but that's not my daughter anymore. Like my daughter, the way she acts now, still has her own little weird ticks and idiosyncratic things and all that, but they're obviously by they're different. But it's like they don't seem like they're the same person. I know it's the same person, and I love that person the same. But it's like this version I'm looking at right now doesn't exist anymore. And like I love that version of her. You know what I mean? I love my current version of my daughter too. But it's just like I, I love th this little version of, of my daughter doesn't exist anymore. And it's just weird. But it's depressing. But you know. Uh, I'm not sure where this is from. Because she is and you know she was probably one of my journals at the time. I'm not quite sure. Based on the cursive. I could barely read that. For her, find became, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my old journals, I used to write in Mead five-star notebooks. And for whatever reason, I started a weird ritual or routine, whatever you want to call it, where I put a, a Ziggy cartoon in the front of every one of the notebooks, or most of them. I think I probably eventually stopped doing it right now. But for a while, if you look at every handwritten journal in a Mead five star notebook like they were they had a Ziggy cartoon in it for some reason. 
My whole life just passed before my eyes, and it was a blooper reel. I understand that. Uh, this is the first page from a screenplay called Red Brick Enigma. I wrote this back in 1999 when I was 18 years old. I still have it. This is... Mm, I think this is Red... Or, uh, what's it called? Broken Age of Muted Demon, another screenplay. And this one I did in 2004 when I was 23. And this was, was it? Was it like, yeah. And this is like a, this is from Halcyon 51st, which actually references the, what happens in Broken Age of Muted Demon. Even though I wrote Broken Age of Muted Demon in 04, and I wrote Halcyon 51st in 0102, Halcyon 51st takes place after Broken Angel, but I wrote Broken Angel 2nd. More Mystery Science Theater. I'm not sure what episode this is. Alright. And of course this is a book. I don't really have a name for this book. I just call it Series 3. The Series 3 book. But this is what, you know, the, the normal view of, of me riding a black dog. Headphones, a cup of coffee, uh, my pen, and then all the pages. I don't see any, I can't tell if there's, there's no date on that page, but... It's probably still 2012. I think I finished this book or the section of this book in 2012. Because there's 800 pages in it. I intended for all 800 to be series three. It ended up only 200 pages of a series three. So there's still 600 blank pages in this book that I need to work on that I haven't touched in 11 years. There's my ID. Oh shit. Oh shit. As I, as I record this right now, it's October 16th, and I just realized... I, my birthday was two days ago, on the 14th. I just turned 42, and I think my license expired. Fuck. Um, that's fine. I've driven on suspended license for a year before anyway. So it looks like the date down here is 2012. Let's say May. So I said this is just showcasing how different my, my handwriting and my writing in these books had changed. It used to be like maybe four or five words per line. Like back in the early days, but somehow there's there's kind of like this weird gap. As I, I need to talk about that sometime. Though. There's always these weird gaps where I start something, kind of go go go. There's like a big gap of nothingness, and then when I come back focused on it, like months later, it all changes. And like it's hard hard to I don't know. It's hard to explain, but like it used to be like one one line would have just a couple words on it. And then I had this long absence and I came back more like dedicated, more focused. And then like my writing just went to where, you know, it was 10. I mean, I was actually utilizing all the lines fully as opposed to just dropping down a couple words and then dropping down to the next line to make it more stylized. So I was trying to fill as much as I actually could, not just like try and fill as much actual space as I could and not just keep dropping to new lines to take up more space, if that makes sense. And this is what a blank page looks like. Always so daunting to look at. The Goonies. I think this title card is because my daughter and I went to go see this at Screenland, the old Screenland Crossroads before they closed it down. And she got a little tiger mask on, needs some popcorn. She says she doesn't remember the Goonies and she doesn't she hasn't seen the Goonies enough to really know it as much as my niece and nephew do, but she's actually seen Goonies in theater. Although I'm pretty sure it was just a Blu-ray that they ran. Anyway, that's it for this week. Definitely interesting. I like that one obviously a lot better than that one. Although it was the same instance. I think I use this uh, picture on like some dating apps and I always get people, you know, a couple of women always like like the picture and ask me what I'm writing. I'm like, I have no idea. I was like, one, it was 10, 11 years ago. Two, I have no idea. But, all right. So again, I still have my uh, ambassadorship, my affiliation link with Coffee Brand Coffee. Got this right here. They got this new blueberry cobbler. They got medium roast, strawberries and cream, dark roast, all in these new K-Cups. And they have like a variety pack you can order now for the K-Cups. Do what you want, but I'm not a big personal fan of K-Cups. I like my coffee and whole bean, and I grind it myself, usually. It retains the best flavor that way. 
but started this series to help promote Coffee Brand Coffee for my affiliation. So if you guys enjoy, for whatever reason, watching my weird little videos, uh, you can check the link below. Go to Coffee Brand Coffee uh, for a discount. Uh, I said I have a referral link, and then you can also put in for the coupon code VHS700, and that'll get you some sort of percentage off. And as always, appreciate you guys watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.